Hallelujah. But nobody likes it because it is not in the nature of man to desire adverse situation and circumstances. Are we together? We always perceive anything adverse as not good. Anything adverse as unpleasant. Anything as adverse as coming from the devil, not from God. And anything adverse as having the capacity to make life unbearable for us on earth. Do you understand? Frustrate your desires, your goals, the objectives you have set, your expectation. Rubbish everything. So nobody likes it at all. Anything adverse, nobody likes it at all. Are we together? Hallelujah. And as a matter of fact, is one reason why a lot of people pray. You only need to listen to the content of the prayer of many believers, right? 99.9% of it at times is just against advice situation, right? For those who know how to pray, and even for those who do not know how to pray, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You know when people pray, you understand? That is praying against adverse condition. Hallelujah. And the interesting thing is adversity is a reality of life. Whether you pray or you do not pray, <laughs> whether you bind the devil or you do not bind the devil, right? Whether you wish it or you do not wish it, whether, you know, uh, uh, you want it or you don't want it. Do you understand? Adversity. Adversity is part and parcel of life. Job writing, I mean, speaking to his friend after he had experienced his own multiple adversity. Do you understand? All his children died one day. Can you imagine that? Then after that, the report came. All his businesses, I mean, the, those days, your wealth is assessed by the number of animals that you have, the cattle, the goat, and everything. And he was so wealthy. He was one of the wealthiest men as of that particular time, right? The report just came that all those animals had been taken away by cattle rustlers or bandits, to use Nigerian language. Do you understand? So he lost everything one day. Are we together? And he lamented as a man that is born of a woman. His days are few, but they are full of adversity. So the reality of our existence on planet Earth is whether you like it or not, adversity is part and parcel of life, of man's existence. Of course, we are going to see the reason why it is so. Are we together? But the fact and the reality that everybody must embrace. Those who pray, for those who do not pray, is we live and our existence on earth, do you understand? Uh, part of parcel of reality of it is things don't work the way you just desire that they work. Are we together? Hallelujah. And that is why I like, you know, the uh, uh, statement of the late Dr. R. Robert. He said, well, the way to live and enjoy life is always expect the best. That is, let your faith be stronger and be up and desire something that is good, but always prepare for the worst. Expect the best, prepare for the worst. So that if the best come, glory to Jesus! You jump up, you rejoice, you dance. <laughs> God is good all the time. But if while expecting the best to happen, the worst shows up, you won't be thrown off balance. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You won't be thrown off balance. I mean, you get ready, you know, for the worst. You know, I was in the hospital yesterday. My dad is on admission. I took him to the hospital. And after the doctor did all the question, you know, without answer, just ask you trace the don't just want to capture his biography do you understand right uh, how old is he you know, one of my younger brothers here uh, is uh, uh, he was born in 1942 let me talk I know him more than all of you eh? he wasn't born in 1942 
He was born in 1938. So he will be 84 this year. <laughs> All of them should be. Well, it's one of those tricks they play in those days. People call them their age. The official age is different from, so that they stay longer in civil service. I mean, some people still do it today. I don't know why people want to die working. You know, and it's because of lack of, you know, no planning, no vision, nothing. Just wake up and live anyhow. Do you understand? You don't have to. Every phases of life. That's why I'm so grateful to God for the message he shared with us this morning. Every stage of life must be prepared for. Otherwise, you will always be living in perpetual crisis. Every stage of your life, you must prepare. When you are young, prepare. Because you won't continue like this. Are you hearing me? You won't be like this. It's just a matter of years. In those days, I used to run 14 times. Run the oh, hey, you football feed as an undergraduate. At times, people would say, well, are you preparing for Milo Marathon? I say, no, I just want to exercise my body. I don't do that again. I bought a bicycle. The first day I rode it, I nearly collapsed. That was the last time. I handed it over to Mauli. First time I saw the thing, it was temptation. Ride bicycle again. And I rode the bicycle. <laughs> it was God that saved me that day. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that was bicycle in those days that we consider, you know, fun. Ride the bicycle. Iani, do you understand? I try it now. My body could not accommodate the stress again. So every phase of your life, you prepare for it. And how well you prepare will define how well that phase will be pleasant to you. You understand what I'm trying to say? Failure to prepare will be assurance of poor manifestation when you get to that phase of life. Are we together? I think I'm even jumping ahead of myself. Anyway, let's put that aside. So you prepare. They ask me all kinds of questions. So after that, the doctor look at me and say, what is your expectation? I say, doctor, what kind of question are you asking? Like in law, you don't ask some questions. We call it leading questions. Leading questions are questions that the answer is obvious. When you ask it, the call say, mm, keep your, don't waste our time. Go to serious question. Do you understand? I'm here in the hospital. I brought my dad. You ask me, what's my expectation? What should be my expectation? <laughs> I said, well, it's for him to bounce back. He said, well, that's not what I'm saying. What exactly do you want him to be? I said, what if that expectation is not met? I said, well, doctor, if the expectation is not met, I will thank God. Because God has been good to this man. As you see him, when he was young, everybody laughed. I said, I could tell a greater bulk of his life history. Huh? The amazing thing is he's still alive today. All his colleagues, all of them are gone. Even those who never lived the kind of rough life that he lived, they are gone. But for him to still be here, almost 84. And in any case, I expect the best for him to be okay. But if the worst happened, right, and prepare for it. Hallelujah. Now you don't lose your dad at over 80 and you say the, the, the witches have done their worst. Abba. Abba. Uh, the witches that never struck for more than eight decades. Or how many decades is that? Eight. Now strike now. You have now blaming witches. Abba. <laughs> That's not correct. Hallelujah. Now let's come back to what we are saying. So you expect the best, but you prepare for the world, so that you don't get prone over balance if the worst happens. Why? We live in a world where adversity is part and parcel of man's existence. It's only a fool that will say it's totally immune from adversity. Are we together? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, the question that we want to come out of our heart, which I want us to examine before I round up this morning and, of course, continue next week, right, is why adversity is part and parcel of man's existence. Because if you don't know the reason why certain things exist, you might not be able to relate well for, to such things. You might not be able to flow along with such things. You might not be able to know how to handle such things. Are we together? Hallelujah. Knowledge is so important. 
and understanding is critical. The Bible says when a man departs from the path of understanding, his dwelling place will be among the dead. Are we together? And it's not okay for the living to be among the dead. So why is it that adversity is part and parcel of man's existence? Point number one. The world is designed not to be static, but to be dynamic. In the wisdom of the creator, almighty God that created this world, he created the half. Are we together? To be you know, a place of change. The heart is never static. And change is part and parcel of anything on planet Earth. On planet Earth, nothing ever remains constant. Nothing, including yourself. 20 years ago, how do you look like? Huh? You know, I was flipping through the records in our faculty some years, maybe about two years ago, and I saw the form I feel when I enter year one. Thank God for records. I saw my signature then. Of course, it has changed. You are signing for nothing then, but today I'm signing for something. So the signature has changed. Now, I look at my face. I could barely recognize. I look at it. I was just looking and I was smiling. And, you know, some uh, people in the office say, ah, uh, what, what, what are you looking at? He said, come and see the son of man. How he looked like when he entered undergraduate as a teenager. They look at you. You understand. I, I didn't look exactly like this. Right? Uh, you might need to just have some, what do they call it now, to be able to say, ah, the same man standing here is the same person that you are looking at the picture. Hallelujah. I've changed. And you too, you are changing. Those in the medical field will tell us that every day, millions of cells die in our body through the normal, you know, uh, biological processes, the, the, they call it metabolic processes, anabolic processes. I don't know what all those mean, but they are processes. Now, as long as you are a living entity, changes are occurring in your body. No one is permanent. Are we together? Hallelujah. Uh, my, my, my old man that I took to the hospital yesterday, we had to carry him. I said, this man in those days will chase me, right? If you, if you catch up with me, beat hell out of me and say, look, and if I escape, say, well, say, uh, bon do you understand? Here is a man we just have to, uh, like a baby, like we that now. Do you understand? That is change. And whether we all like it or not, if Jesus tarries, all of us will get to that stage one day. Don't desire to get to the state where they will carry you. You can still believe God by faith that till you will leave this world, you'll be okay. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, change is part and parcel of life. Man is changing. Not only man, planet Earth also is changing. I'm sure if there is something that, you know, is a topical issue globally today that people talk about, many of us, we care less about it because we are still battling with existential issue. It's the topic of climate change. Do you understand? That the heart, the temperature of the heart is increasing. It's not what it used to be hundreds of years ago. Every year, the temperature is increasing, increasing, and changes are occurring all over the world. We may not perceive it. Do you understand? Because the man that is changing, you yourself, you, are, you don't know you are changing. It's people that have seen you after some say, ah, on my own. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Planet Earth is changing. Right? This is May. May is almost ending. The rainy season has not started. In those days, when I was, we were young, by May, fresh yam will have eat the market. May, in those days. But you can't even see Agbado today. The Agbado you see, you will know that those ones struggles to come into the world. And it's as a result of pouring for. Not that the soil is still not rich, but pouring for. Rain has not. May. In those days, June is usually the peak of rainy season. But we are in May now. How many rainfall have we experienced this year? Right? It wasn't like that several years ago. Those in the field of climatology will tell us that 
climate change every 35 years. That is, if you do some studies now, and on the basis of you say, well, this is the climatic condition in this environment, this is the climatic condition in this environment, go check it 35 years from now, what you have considered to be the truth or considered to be, you know, the factual scientific uh, 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 condition of, you know, uh, the climate in that area will have changed. Why? The heart is programmed to be changing. Every day, mountains are wearing off. Do you understand? There are places in those days, 20, 30, 40 years ago, that you have huge glaciers, eyes that are frozen permanently. Nobody thought that those ice will melt, but gradually they are melting. They are melting now. Many parts of you know uh, the, the northern hemisphere, for instance, that used to have very cold temperature, the temperature is rising. And it's affecting everything. It's affecting animals that live there. It's affecting the plants that used to exist there. And it's even determining the dynamics of operation of sicknesses and diseases. There are many parts of the world that some diseases, they believe they could never, 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 never appear in those places. Do you understand? But climate change has made those diseases to become a reality in those places. Are we together? Hallelujah. So the simple truth is that we live in a world where things are never permanent. Are we together? Everything is subject to change. And everything is changing. Everything is changing. Everything is changing. The only thing that we perceive that is not really changing is the rising of the sun. And it's setting. And it's because God deliberately in his wisdom sustain the angle at which the half is exposed to the sun. 66 and a half degrees. A little adjustment like this is either all of us get frozen or we get roasted by the heat. So planet Earth is changing. Rivers that used to be full of water in those days, water are no longer there. And for those who have studied the history of the earth, particularly scientifically, they will tell you that there are many parts of the world today that, you know, many of us will never believe that life used to exist in those days. They will mention the Sahelian region of West Africa, for instance. The great empires that defines, you know, the, the glory and majesty, you know, of the Negro race. Their ability to be able to establish themselves politically. Do you understand? All those empires were not in the forest zone here. Yeah? They were in the Sahel or in the desert. How could empire develop in such a place? The condition we, that prevails there today was not the condition prevailing in those days. Those places were grassland. Rivers were flowing. Do you understand? Water was available. People could farm. And as a result of the economic activities, do you understand? Empire started springing up. I was watching a documentary one day and you know, those who study the Nile, you know, today when they say, well, the Nile is made up of two rivers, essentially. The blue Nile that takes its source from Lake Tana in Ethiopia, descending from the Abyssinia Islands, and of course the White Nile from Central Africa. But the man come, he came and said, no, 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 no. The Nile is more than just three. There is the Green Nile. So where is the Green Nile? He said it has disappeared. And of course he was able to trace it, trace it, trace it, Trace his source to one of the wadis in the desert today. How was he able to establish it? They entered the cave where people used to live, you know, thousands of years ago when that river was still flowing. Huh? And they saw paintings they put there of the economic activities. Then in some of the wadis that they saw, they saw alligator, they saw crocodile. How could crocodile exist in the desert? Those animals were cut off. Suddenly, when that river could not flow again. So, life, half is a place where change is the norm. And thank God change is the norm. Hallelujah. Otherwise, some of us, if change happens not to be the norm, that means if adversity comes, that means adversity will define your reality throughout your existence on earth. And it's not like that. Are we together? Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. Let's see what the scripture says about this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can you project it for us? 
Ecclesiastes chapter 3, starting from verse 1. Very powerful truth from the mouth of Solomon. The rich, wealthiest man. Oh, is he wealthiest? The most, you know, uh, wisest man ever to operate on earth. It says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Can, can, can you see that? Well, it appears very simplistic, but it's loaded with meaning. What he's telling us is that everything has its own season. Are we together? In other words, the art operates in circles of season. There is the rainy season. We are almost in the rainy season now. The plants are green. You know, streams are flowing gradually. We all like it. Do you understand? But it's just a matter of time. The rainy season will change to dry season. And of course, dry season with all its dust. Huh? Everybody getting thirsty because the weather is hot and so on and so forth. And after some time, the dry season, we also change to rainy season. In other words, on earth, nothing is permanent. The proof that something will not last is that you can see it. So, number one reason why adversity is part and parcel of life is nothing is permanent on planet earth. So, if today you are finding it good, don't think that that is how the goodness will just continue. Hallelujah. We all pray that the good things continue and thank God is ever faithful to answer our prayers. But the reality is at times, the good things that happens in life, they are seizing as well. Hallelujah. And of course, the adverse things also, they are seizing. And that's a good news huh, for someone here this morning. It seems you are facing adversity challenges. Things are not really working the way you actually desire. The season will soon be over. Huh? And you desire to get married, no person to marry you. Very soon, plenty of them will show up. When the season comes. Hallelujah. During dry season, grass, during rainy season, you see grass growing everywhere. But during dry season, don't. The only place where there is water. But everywhere, during rainy season, you see grass growing. You soon move to season the season you actually desire, where the good things will happen. Are we together? Hallelujah. Where you call us to come and rejoice with you because life is in a season. So the good thing is what you are passing through today, you are only passing through. You will never just stay put there. It has come and it will go. That's why the commonest phrase you see in the Bible is, and it came to pass. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. Because nothing ever come to settle down. Life is changing. Things are changing. Rivers are changing. The river Niger we used to know 30, 40 years ago is not what it is today. The Lake Chad by far. One of the largest fresh water inland lake in Africa. is shrinking to a point where I think it's just about 25% of what it used to be 50 years ago. And that lake sustains, is one reason why there is conflict in that area. That lake sustains all kinds of animal, all kinds of plant, and so on and so forth. Life around Lake Chad was so much, right from ancient times. I think the oldest canoe ever to be discovered in Africa was discovered very close to the bank of one of the rivers that flows into the Lake Chad. You understand? I think it's the Yobe River. That canoe, 10,000 years old, where they dug it up. 10,000 years old, when they did the carbon, carbon 14, you know, uh, uh, analysis. That means 10,000, I can't. The woman was moving away, but her heart was going back. At a point, she couldn't take it. Oh! And the Bible says she became a pillar of salt. Hallelujah. The only thing you should be so much concerned with in life is God. Not even your spouse. The day will come, he or she will go. Are we together? Huh? Because you join him or her in the grave. Are we together? Praise the Lord. 
The only thing you should get concerned about is how well is your relationship with God? How well is your... Because that is the only thing that has eternal value. And not only that, you will account for that on that day. Hallelujah. But that is what most people do not give serious consideration to. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Let's pick another point this morning and I will round up. Shall we do that? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, another reason why change or adversity is part and parcel of the earth. This one is positive. Is that without adversity, the earth will be a conglomeration of mediocres. The best a man comes when he's faced with a difficult situation. Hallelujah. You won't believe what you can do until you find yourself in a very extremely tight corner where there is nothing else to do. Hallelujah. The man of God was sharing a testimony when he was a young kid. Their neighbor had orchard, you know, and he fenced the thing around. All kinds of very beautiful, beautiful fruits. Guava, mango, you know, during their fruiting season will be there. And their neighbor was such a person that, you know, during the fruiting season, he preferred that those fruits will be dropping down than packing them. How many fruits can you eat? Than just sharing. So, say, well, uh, one way or the other, anytime the man sneak out of the house, they will sneak into the fence. They will plop, plop, plop. You know when people want to take what they have not worked for? They do it greedily. I said, one day, the man he came back, all the mangoes, they pluck every, both the one ripe and the one not ripe. Hallelujah. And the man kept quiet. He didn't see anything. Right? So, two days after that, he left the house. He pretended as if he was leaving. He, of course, he actually left. Opened the small gate, but instructed someone to lock it. That He would teach those this, 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 this useless boy some lesson. So, the moment he left, he and his brother, he said, well, they sneak in again. And of course, the person he gave instruction lock, he didn't know that his association dog, that you are usually during the day keep that animal in cage, he had released that animal. And the dog was moving around. And suddenly, as he was throwing something, he said, he said, turn back. And he saw this dog almost as tall as him. And he started moving backward. As he was moving backward, the dog was moving towards him. You know, that's one thing about carnivores, right? Uh, if you stand your ground, it won't attack. But you pick race, it will pursue you. So, he said, as he look at him, look backward, look at him, the association just dash at him. Nowhere to run to. He started running around and the dog almost got him. That was when he jumped. The wall was more than six feet tall. He said he never believed he could jump that fence that day. Ah! On the other side. Now with that kind of energy, he could have won a gold medal at Olympics. Honestly. Right? But how it happened? He said maybe an angel assisted him. But angels don't assist thieves to escape. Do you understand? That's what you know. But he just find himself on the other side. He escaped. Why? You see, you can never believe what you can do when your back is pressed to the wall. Ideas for survival comes. Initiatives that can turn things around will come. Hallelujah. When you say you don't know how to handle something, it's very Yahweh or you still think that one miracle will come from one place. When you know that nothing is coming from nowhere, who the best in you comes out. Are we together? The best in you comes out. So at times it takes adversity for the best in man to come out. Are we together? And that is why the Bible says you can't develop solid character 
when you have not faced adverse condition. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 5. King James translation. Right? Let's read the King James. Then of course we will read the NIV. So get the two ready. Hallelujah. The best characters they are formed when man or when you pass through a difficult situation in life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now let's start reading from verse 1. Huh? Give us the NIV so that we don't waste time. Hallelujah. NIV. That therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2 now. Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Verse 3. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. How many of you want to glory in suffering? But this is Paul saying, we glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance. One of the fruit of the spirit is ability to persevere. And what enables you to develop it is suffering. Yoruba people say, my grandmother knows it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you never suffer. And you say you are wise. Now, who is your teacher? Right? Paul says, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Now, let's go ahead. Verse 4 now. Huh? He said, perseverance leads to character. And character, hope. That means people who lack character can never operate in any hope. And it is true. Why is it that people steal? That's lack of character. Because they don't have any hope that something good will come to take care of their needs. Are we together? Huh? Hallelujah. Solid character is formed as a result of adversity. And God wants us to be men and women of character. Character makes a lot of difference. Because without character, man can never be what God has destined him to be. Destinies are frustrated where character is not available. Lack of character will undermine your capacity to fulfill destiny. Lack of character makes you a cheap customer huh? and co-laborer with the devil to wreck your destiny. And character comes through what? Perseverance. Perseverance through what? Suffering. Hallelujah. So, adversity at times comes to make us to become what God has destined us to be. Go and check world history very well. You realize adverse conditions always produce great leaders. Three great leaders. I'm not talking of people that occupy office. Go and look at it. Today in the United States on Mount Rushmore, I think in North Dakota or South Dakota, very huge mountain. They did a stone carving of the four greatest presidents the Americans ever had. They've had fantastic men as their president. But nobody will ever forget these four in office. Have them there because it was like, you know, the man that fought, led an army of people that don't even know how to, how to, how to fire peace to defeat the British army, the most powerful army in the world as of that time, and enable America to become independent. So till today, they respect George Washington. They offered him the crown. He said, no, I will never. I will never. We fought the British because of the tyranny of the crown. I will never be your king. I will serve. And after he served, he left. They wanted him to continue. He said, no. We still have great men here. Huh? Thomas Jefferson is there. He was the one that single-handedly wrote the Constitution. Go and pick him. John Adams is there. Right? Benjamin Franklin is there. These are great philosophers and scientists. Go and pick them. I've done my own beat. I'm going back to my state. The state was so small, Vermont. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Right? And that's what makes America to be America today. They are unique democracy. That the whole world is copying because they had a man who was not selfish. Will have said, "Made me king," and everybody will have said, "King, 
George Washington. He risked his life fighting the British. But he said no. Then after that, they pick Abraham Lincoln. What made Lincoln to be great? He was there. You know, when that crisis emerged in the United States, the crisis of the Union, right? He tried to attack or to address the contradiction in the American political life as of that time. He said, we have a constitution, right? That says all men are born equal. And all men, they are entitled to right. Why I see that, that constitution is operating and a sizable number of American population, they are still slaves. And of course, the controversy came. Some say, well, we bought them, they are our property. He said, no, we can't continue. War broke out. And he said, well, the union must be maintained. Never find it so easy at all. Because the brilliant generals there, the Americans, are they switch over to the confederate. So to get people that would lead the Union Army was difficult. And from one place to the other, right, it was defeat. They had to go and address the American troops at the Battle of Gettysburg. That speech that he wrote and he delivered is still one of the greatest speeches that any state man could ever deliver. He rode on horse to the battlefield. His security man had to push him down. He said, well, let me stand up and address the people. He said, well, if there is someone that deserves to get the bullet, it's me as the president. He said, Mr. President, Americans are giving me the duty to protect you. So anything that I require that I may do to protect you, I will do so. Where you die, Americans will demand what happened from me. So I will push you down if you climb that also again. Sir. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And of course, succeeded in maintaining the union. Of course, he was assassinated not too long after that. Right? Then you have the face of Theodore Roosevelt. That man. That's where we got Teddy Bear. Because he used to own a bear as a dog. So they nicknamed that bear Teddy Bear. For those of you that still carry the whole thing, you still have Teddy Bear. You know, beside your bed. I know some people still have Teddy Bears here. Yeah? Either small, big, or whatever. Do you understand? I mean, that man take, took some actions that transformed America. Then, of course, you have the face of FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the only man who ever emerged four times as the president of the United States. He was there when the economy was so bad, and he said, vote me in, I will give you a new deal. And he came in, turned things around, 1932. Uh, no, before 1932. Was it 1932 or so? Well, 1932. They were so pleased with him, they voted him in again, second time. So happy with him, they voted him again, third time. And that was when the Second World War broke out. He was the one in charge when the Japanese invaded Pearl Harbor. Right. And he had to address the clear war. Nobody thought America would fight like that. But it was through his effort, he laid the foundation that make America to emerge as a global power, highly respected to today. Are we together? Fourth time, he contested the one. He died in office. And the Americans say, no. From today henceforth, nobody will take more than two times. Hallelujah. Their face is etched on the rock. Mount Rushmore. Right? All of them, they were product of adversity. Are we together? The best a man usually comes out when he's faced with adversity. You won't know that you're a genius in cookery until you have one piece of tuba, jam tuba left to survive on. Nothing else will come. Very soon you become creative. You fry it in the morning with stew and you enjoy it. You cut it into pieces, you pan it in the afternoon. And when they see you eating pandedia, they will say you are eating the king of all food. They won't know eh, what it all for. Do you understand? So you eat pandedia, right? And in the evening, oh, so what can we make out of it? Porridge is there. And people see you eating porridge. Ah, ah, bad one, eh? They won't know his, <laughs> his ingenuity, the product of adversity. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man becomes creative when his back is pressed to the wall. 
The best in man comes out when there is nothing else to fall back upon. Are we together? <laughs> Are we together? Are we together? Now that is one reason why God permits adversity to come. The best in you will never come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Until you are faced with adverse condition. And it's like that. When you look at the stories of invention, here and there, to a great extent, some of those things, their emergence was propelled by adversity. We have atomic power today. Nobody was talking about atomic power. Of course, those who in the field of physics, they've been saying it, that when you split the atom of uranium, enormous power is released that has constructive and destructive ability. Are we together? But it only existed in the world of physics until the Second World War broke out. And the whole world, all the fight countries fighting then, they were looking for that game-changing equipment. Because using conventional weapons is like we not get the thing done. They went back to do research. Right? And suddenly, right, thank God for leaders that are open-minded. FDR had invited the American scientists and they told him that, well, we've conducted, the Germans have gone ahead in nuclear research. And it is possible to get a powerful weapon that can turn things around. And they advised him to move fast because if Adolf Hitler succeed in getting it before them, any country that succeed in making it false, we march as the global, and we hold the whole world to ransom. But he said it must be done in utmost secrecy. Now, how do you conduct such things without budgetary allocation? Because he are marking or spending money that is not part of the budget is impeachment grant. But he did it. Just started the project in New Mexico. They call it Manhattan Project. Well, over 1,000 scientists were working. And many of them did not even know what they are doing. They were just working. Put it under a well, highly respected man. And they were giving him breathing every day, every day, every day. Unfortunately, he died before the war, I mean the weapon, you know, uh, emerged. But thank God for, you know, the vision he had. The man that, stepped, uh, that occupied the place after him, when they briefed him about the weapon, he said, was so sure that, look, the former president did not inform us everything. It was just, at times, hearing my hand down project. But that was the weapon that stopped the Second World War. Because if America had not used atomic weapon on Japan, uh, well, the war could have ended, but the human cost could have been more than what we consider it to be today. Because it's a, war, it's a war that was so destructive, close to 70 million human beings died. And Truman said when he has the chairman joint chief of staff, if we don't use this weapon, give me the cost. He said, they said the first day of our invasion of Japan, the resistance will be so ferocious to the point that, Mr. President, get ready for 250,000 Marines to go the first day. To go where? They would die. Ah! And second day, the more we press forward, the more lives we go. And to succeed, we must get ready 1.5 million people to slaughter. So it was at that point that he decided he can never allow Americans to be killed like that. Go and drop the weapon on them. But warn them, let them surrender. They refuse to surrender. Drop the first one. They said we won't surrender. Drop the second one. Within 24 hours, they surrender. Yautoya. You know that? Kunida have any name? One, he dada ni. Ah. Now ba lu o dada. Your dara for him be she name. But o to e jo. Hallelujah. Let me stop here this morning. Eh? You now see the reason why adversity is part and parcel of life. Number one, God never designed the heart to be a place where everything will be permanent. Why? The heart exists in times and space. Do you understand? That's point number one. Point number two, why is it so? Eh? You forgot it? So that we can depend on God. There is a way adversity makes man to depend on. Have you gone to visit someone who has just lost a precious soul? 
even if it's gonna gonna before. Ah, agent you are. Huh? Everything you say. That's adversity. At such time, people, people, they, 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 even if a dog can pray, he will say, oh, yeah, and he will say, amen. Adversity has a way of taking us back to God. Pulling our ears back to God. But you don't need to face difficult situations before you connect back to God. Are we together? And the third reason why, you know, adversity is part of and parcel of life is the best a man comes out when you face adversity. The best God God has put inside you comes when you face adversity. It's a proven fact and it's a reality. When people discover that look, <laughs> there is no choice again, then the best. The best in character. The best in perseverance and if it's, a, if it's an army the best in fighting spirit comes out when people realize there is no option see tomorrow people still wonder how Alexander the Great defeated the greatest powers that time the Persians but he applied the principle of bringing out the best when people realize no option when they go to the place where they will fight he asked his troops to do parade and he inspected them as the commander in chief while he was inspecting he ordered that all their ship the ship that brought them that you are expecting will take them back home should be set on fire all the ships were burned and the soldiers were wondering what's going on that's where the supply is that's their instrument of escape alexander ordered it to be bombed then he addressed them and said well don't consider me crazy do you still want to see your wives? Can I hear you? They say, yes. Do you still want to see your children in Greece? They say, yes. Do you still want to get back home to that lovely country? Our dearest home called Greece. They say, yes. They say, well, the only way is to fight and to win. No way to escape. Nobody gave them the ghost of a chance. They faced an enemy four times numerically stronger than them. More powerful than them militarily. Well mobilized. But at the end of the day, the Greeks defeated Persia. And that's how Greeks emerged as the superpower of the world. Those men wanted to go back and see their wives and children. No way to go other than to fight and win. The best came out of them. If you are passing through any adverse condition today, don't look at it negatively. Is to bring the best out of you. If there is no money in your pocket, right? Look at it. How can it be the best out of you? Do you understand? The best is how to handle little. How to use little to achieve much. Do you understand? Right? So, let the best in character, ability, do you understand? To manage resources. Right? Learn the lesson. As we on strike now, how many students like that? Nobody. How many students don't like that? Let that adverse condition bring the best out of you. Instead of murmuring every day, oh, that's so. Some have turned it into an anthem. Huh? Are not, whether you like it or not, it's not something anybody like, right? You're already in year two, no, year four, part two. Do you understand? As a result of us who strive. Don't complain. Let the best come out of you. What's the best? Go and spend the time to develop skills. Go and acquire skills. Because we have reached a point in Nigeria where certificate can sustain you. Certificate is just to certify that you go, you have attended university in this faculty, in this department, and you earn this degree. Nothing more. Do you understand? Hallelujah. That certificate cannot certify whether you will succeed. So how do you go about it? Go and learn skills. Skills are, will always be in need. Certificate will sometimes be in need. I read laws. They've developed computers that are giving solid legal advice now. So very soon nobody will consult lawyers again. Huh? 
So if your mind is learning, I will make money by the time people install computer. It's just like in those days when training as a secretary was a profession. People study Pitman, Shotan, all those. I want to be, and some nuances, so sec, uh, Polytechnic offers secretary administration. Everybody is own secretary now with laptop. Do you understand? At times in my department, I wonder, I say, well, ah, I wish all these people working with me, let them give, let, 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 let them give, let, let their salaries be given to me so that I could use it to develop the department. Because I don't really need that. With my laptop, everything I want is on that system. Pa, pa, pa. Is it memo? Huh? Is it anything? Right? I don't need a secretary. So that profession is fading away. Everybody could type now. Who can type? Huh? Even if it is A, here is D. It's in this corner. Eventually, you finish the letter you want to type. And the more you do that, the more proficient you become. Are we together? That's how many of us will learn how to type. So go and learn skills. But tomorrow, till Jesus will come. Right? You always want to look good. Yes or no? You don't want to look good. Well, who will make you look good? I said. Certificate. His skills. Your bad. Look at your hair now. We were set. That, that. Eh? that guy collected some money from you. Abby? Eh, that is skills. We can't do without skills, but we can do without certificate. Go and learn skills. What can you work can... If you don't know any skill you can learn, go and meet me. I, I will be joining you here. I will be praying every day. It's still a skill. By the time you join me to pray six hours in a week, you will know how to demobilize the devil. Suddenly, you will be thanking God for this asu break that during that time you learn how to confront enemy. Do you understand? Right? So, if you don't want to learn Bible, you don't want to learn that, come and join me. I will teach you skills. How to pray. Huh? Do you understand? How to pray. How to confess scriptures. Now, you hold your Bible for the next one hour. You are rolling out scriptures. What's the use of that? That is power. Hallelujah. Because when a believer opens his mouth and scripture is coming out, it's like a sword coming out. It's like fire coming out. In the spirit realm, demons run away. They scatter. And a zone of life is created around you. Are we together? So you create a zone of life around you when you create, when, when you confess scriptures, that the forces of darkness will find very difficult to penetrate. I will teach you that. And interesting me, I won't charge you a cover. But I know you won't come. Rise up on your feet. You go to the one where they ask you to pay. Now, so it be. Human being likes difficult things. <laughs> Easy things, they don't like it. So, next week, we'll continue to look at why is adversities. Why do we have adversities? Do you understand? We've examined three today. We still have about three or four or five or six or seven, depending on how God wants us to look at it. By the time we are through with that, some of you will be thanking God for adversity. Can you lift up your hands unto God? Hmm? I'm thanking this morning. Now, I, I won't say I'm prophesying, but I have a good news for someone here this morning. I don't know how you, 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 you are feeling so bad, you are feeling so down. It's like you are the only one who has problem on that. You are not the only one who has problem. Let me say that. Do you understand? Problem is universal. The only thing is it's peculiar in various ways to each person. Do you understand? That if I tell you my own challenges, right? Want me to praise God, right? This place now we have to seal it, we have to put AC, we have to put all those things complete. Then, those are some of my own challenges. God will do it now. The good news I have for you is this the adverse condition you are passing through is a season, and the word I have for you is that season will soon be over. Are you hearing me? If your adverse condition is unemployment, very soon, that season will be over. You know, one of our you know, pastors called me yesterday afternoon. He said, Daddy, he called from overseas. He said, Daddy, I, I want to discuss certain things with you. Ah. I said, well, uh, hold on. I will call you later in the day because at that point in time, I too I was facing an adversity. You know, how I will get doctors to attend to my dad. He's an old man, but I don't want him to go. You know, I, I love him. You know, I, up to today, if he has time, you sit down with him, no matter where you are passing through, he comes with jokes that you will be rolling on the ground. Do you understand? You always want to leave. Hallelujah. 
So I said, I will call you later in the day. So I call him. He said, well, I just want to share with you, they've given me a job. Or I got a job, I'll start working, so, so, and so, place, so, so, and so. I said, well, glory to Jesus. Is that what you couldn't tell me by his text message? He said, no. I desire that it will come from my mouth. This same mouth that I've been saying things are like this. But we thank God it's like this. So, we thank God together. And of course, I was so happy. But after that, I realized that no matter the problems, challenges you are passing through, is for a season. Today, you desire to have a baby, you don't have one. Very soon, you'll be running away from babies. Eh? Like my wife. Hallelujah. Uh, they ran away. That's why they were three. Hallelujah. But before they started coming, Uluwa, Uluwa, Uluwa. Amen and amen. It's a season. That's one thing I want you to. I don't have a job. That's a season. Huh? I want to get married. Nobody to marry me. It's a season. Very soon. Almost all men will want to marry. But be selective. Oh. Don't marry a gorilla. Do you understand? Uh, and say, ah, oh, you're doing good time. You're, you're doing now. Nah, nah, oh, no. It's for a season. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Even when you are sick, it's for a season. Are we together? So, don't formulate or come up with a permanent decision, permanent perspective on an issue that is only seasonal. Don't say because we are in dry season, rain is not falling. So, all the buckets you use to fetch water during rainy season, you break all of them. The rainy season will soon come back. Are we together? So God has not forgotten you. Please put that down. Huh? Oh, 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 ma karos kipo shitakaya. Sahala kase kapondaya. Masum falihandaya. Huh? Put this down, please. What you are passing through is a season. God has had your prayers. You have prayed. Thank God for prayers. Prayer works in season. The season when you see the manifestation will soon come. God has not forgotten you. I don't need to say see the spirit of God. That's the message this morning. Father, we thank you and we give you thanks.